Hey, and welcome back to the Courageous Nerd YouTube channel for another interview. Today I'm talking to actor Travis Burns, who plays Dylan in the new film Dreamcatcher, directed by Jacob Johnston. We also chatted about Travis's time in the soap opera Neighbours, in which he played Tyler Brennan from 2015 to 2018. If you enjoyed this interview or any of the others on the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, great. So welcome and thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you for having me. Great. And I suppose, um, how did you first start acting? Was it a hobby or did you kind of find it later on? Well, I kind of I kind of fell into acting. I first started out as a photographer. I went to school and I got a bachelor's in photo imaging. Mm. And then unfortunate events happened. My camera got stolen. I had about $20,000 worth of stuff, gear stolen from me and insurance took about 10 months to get it back and that moved into uh modeling and then modeling basically into acting and i felt i found acting so free for me for what i was doing at the time when i when i started mm. and i suppose um to what extent have other australian exports like say hugh jackman or margot robbie mm -hmm. or the hemsworth brothers kind of inspired your own journey as an actor Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I kind of went through a similar process. I was fortunate enough to go through a similar process to them. I was on Neighbours for three and a half years, yeah. which catapulted many, many people. And I kind of did a little backwards. I moved here first. So I was fortunate enough to shoot a show over in South Africa for right. four months, I think it was. And then I had a lot of visa issues in the United States, which forced me back to move to Australia. And then I did Neighbours. And then I decided to that I had to try it. You know, Hollywood's mm. the place where everything happens, all the studios are here, all the auditions are here. So I had to make the move and I've been here for two and a half years now. Right. And yeah. Yeah. So I'm actually I'm familiar with neighbors, which you mentioned. And oh, I know you play yeah. Amazing. And I know you played uh, Tyler Brennan on it. And I suppose right. um how much of a like concern was there at the time of being typecast in a continuous role like that? I mean, yeah, that's a hundred percent a factor. I'm not sure if you saw images or anything, but I had, you know, I had long hair down to my yeah. shoulders and I, you know, uh, had it up in a bun because I've got very thick hair. So I, if I let it down, it was kind of like a big Afro and I didn't, didn't quite like that. So when I finished up neighbors, I actually cut it all off. Right. Um, it was one wish for my wife when we got married for me to have short hair. And I ended up just cutting it for that. And kind of changing my look a little bit whereas i could have came over here with the long hair and i just think i mean for all the females out there it's a lot like long hair it's a lot to to keep up and wash and and maintain i guess so i mm. respect them in that way but i feel like for me i just had to cut it all off start fresh move over here and you know put my best foot forward yeah, and I know you're kind of saying you did it kind of backwards that you were in the States first and then kind of came back. But I suppose yeah. what lessons from neighbours have you been able to apply in, in the work since? I have I took full advantage and I have no uh, dramas in saying that. I took full advantage of neighbours. Mm. So a lot happens. We shoot 40 weeks of the year. Um, we churn out seven episodes a week or five episodes but a, a ton of uh, content basically. So I always, I learn a lot through acting. I always sat in the editing room. So I learned a lot of editing. I sat in the color rooms and I learned a lot of coloring the videos. So I've applied that and I shoot a lot of content for brands at the moment as well. So all that has helped me to where I am today and acting wise, of, you know, picking up a scene and learning it in 20, 25 minutes. It's kind of that muscle memory that, um, neighbors really taught us because we sometimes you get given a script it's like yeah get ready for that you haven't read it yet we're shooting that in 20 minutes and the scene we're only going to shoot it for 10 it's only going to take us 15 minutes to shoot the scene so they work very very quickly there so you gotta you know you sink or swim yeah and i'm just going to say um so more recently you're in dream catcher which is a new film mm -hmm. i suppose how was the process of becoming involved with that so Dreamcatcher, uh, I played Dylan, who is DJ Dreamcatcher, which, you know, first and foremost, it was amazing to play him. 
the character himself had so many levels and he had so much depth to the character and it was so fun to work on that. I worked with my coach, my acting coach, and just to figure out, you know, where, what happened previously to get to where he is at the beginning of the film. And it was so fun to, you know, work out all that and, you know, take bits and, and throw some bits away that didn't work for us and then shooting it, you know, blood, guts, you know, stunts. It was, it was really fun to be a part of. Yeah, and I suppose as anyone who might be unfamiliar with the film or kind of what it's about, how would you describe it? Well, I guess the, the film would probably centre around me, Dylan, uh, also known to his fans, obviously, as the DJ Dreamcatcher. Mm. Um, you know, something goes, you know, terribly wrong at the very beginning and it involves Dylan and a group of friends and basically it turns into a... 48 hour whirlwind of like violence and, and, and mayhem and blood and guts. And it's, yeah, that's pretty much as much as I, I guess I can say. Yeah. Yeah. And um, not to give anything away for anyone who hasn't seen the film, but I can see kind of parallels between something like Scream or I know what you did 100%. last summer. So I suppose yep. like what kind of influences, well, not even that, but what were kind of the thoughts in your head when you read the script in terms of, um, what could have influenced it, I guess? Yeah, so when I, I first read the script, um, I actually auditioned for a different role. Right. Uh, it's now playing, played by uh, Zach. Yeah. And he play. I'll be honest, he plays that role much better than I would have. So it's kind of, kind of all works out. And I read yeah. the script and um, I was a big fan of I Know What You Did Last Summer and Scream, those in particular. And I kind of got a little, little sense of that vibe, but also... You know, Jacob Johnson, who's the director and the writer, and he implemented so many different elements to just, you know, the, the slasher film, like the EDM and, and the, the relationships between the managers and, and um, the publicists, I kind of, yeah, Adrian, Josephine, mm. and, and then you got the friends on top of that. So he, he created so many different elements as opposed to just being a simple uh, slash of film. So it was really, really cool to read that. Yeah, and obviously you mentioned uh, Jacob Johnston, the writer director and uh, Zachary Gordon, you mentioned as well as in it. Um, so I suppose, how was your experience of working with that creative team on the project? Yeah, so the cast, um, they, were, they, were, they were incredible to work with there. So we're all like, we're all quite young, we're all, like vibing each other and the energy on set was always like a fun energy because sometimes you can you know you get like the very serious and this but it was actually quite fun we had a few trailers and on while we're at lunch we'd play music and have like chat and it, it was quite fun in that aspect and also like jacob i respect jacob so so much and he was i was very lucky to be a part of that project and have him directing and he pushed me as an actor and took me to levels that I didn't know that I could reach. And, you know, I, I trusted him with his vision for the, for the script and how to shoot it and everything like that. And I just trust him with that and went with it. And I think it turned out really, really good. Yeah. And just thinking for anyone who might have like seen the film or come across this interview, and they might want to find out more about you or your work. Like where could they kind of look for that information? Sorry, say that again. Yeah, like just to say, if anyone who might have seen the film or found this wanted to find out more about you or your work, like where, where could they look to try and do that? Uh, they can always check me out on Instagram at Mr. Travis Burns. Um, IMDb is a really good one for information. Um, there's IMDb Pro, but IMDb is probably the best one. Or I guess Google is a phenomenal search engine these days. You type in anything, it comes up in seconds. So there's always Google. So just write my name in and I think I should pop up. I haven't Googled myself yet, mm -hmm. but I think something, something will come up. But yeah. Yeah. And I suppose kind of looking ahead, what do you hope to accomplish with the rest of 2021? Oh, get through it. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously 2020 was a bit of a, uh, interesting year for everyone around yeah. the world affected obviously COVID-19 and you know I took I, I took that time to really dig deep and figure out like I'm sure a lot of other people did as well to figure out what they really wanted to do with their life and 
Um, I spent most of the end of last year creating a golf brand it's called Kior, K-J-O-R-E. And um, I've been, they'll be launching, I think, next month. And it's like an apparel accessory golf brand. And so this year we'll be focusing on that and also auditioning and hopefully we'll have a few more projects by the end of the year. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, uh, that all sounds great. Um, that's actually all the questions I've got here. So thanks for taking the time Perfect. to speak with me and uh, uh, good luck and stay safe. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Connor. I appreciate it. <laughs>